Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a rumble pedal kit, either using components you buy or the kit I sell. I sell um, either the full, fully assembled finished product or in kit form, which includes uh, a case for it, um, mounts to hold the motors on the pedals. These are the Logitech mounts. I'm oh, sorry, these are the Thrustmaster mounts. These are the Logitech mounts. Uh, it runs Xbox vibration motors. Uh, I use the small weighted one for the accelerator and the heavy one for the brake. So you get a good ABS vibration then. Um, uses an Arduino Nano. Where are we? There it is. And a motor controller board. Okay, so first thing to do is uh, take our Arduino and our motor controller board and we wire them up as per the wiring diagram there. So feel free to pause that or come back to that when, when required. Uh, it shows the orientation of which connectors to use on the power supply um, connectors, DC connectors, and what cables go where. So it's got these two outputs on the side. These are the, um, the motor outputs. doesn't matter the polarity on those because it would just change the direction the motor spins in. Uh, this external input, you can either use a 5 volt power supply, uh, say a phone charger, with the ends cut off and uh, have that coming in, or a USB cable, and you just connect the blue and the the red and the black cables into the uh, the input and the ground. And then from the uh, nano, you've got the five volt cable coming into the five volt port on the motor driver, and the ground going into the ground. And then these five connectors here go to these five um, connectors here, ENA. In one, in two, in three, in four, and ENB. We'll get to programming the uh, Arduino shortly. So, just on to uh, assembly. So, here's one assembled as per diagram. Um, I'd recommend cutting all the cables to about three inches long. That makes it uh, fit nicely in the case. Um, plenty of room to, to work with. Uh, the power cable wants to be about four inches long because that's got to come around up up to there. Okay, so first thing to do is we've got our Arduino Nano case and we want to clip this in here. Now, if you've used legs on your Nano, you might want to clip those off to give it space, but you might be okay. So that should clip in the front there. And then you can push it down, forward, and there's a couple of screw holes Where's the camera gone? There's a couple of screw holes there. So we just pop a screw in there. That was self-tapping screw. Pop it all in place firmly. If I can get it in. Okay. So now we want to make sure our power connectors are in our case. So the motor driver board sits on these there's four pegs in the case. A bit hard to see here, but there's four pegs in the case that locate into these four corner holes. So we can simply put that in there. Click it down onto them. You say simply. Is it gone? There we go. There we go. So that's uh, pressed in. Now you notice the Arduino case is loose in here. Um, what we actually do is once we're happy it's all working we work super glue that to the side against there like that and um it's just easier to put it in and separately and super glue it than try and put an arduino in a 
an odd angle. It's just trying to keep the case compact. So what we need to do now is connect the uh, the the power to the board to this DC input connector, making sure I always stick to center positive. So uh, do that, and then these two cables from either side of the board to the uh, to the outputs for the motors. So I'll just do that, and then I'll come back to you. Right, for the next step, we're going to need uh, a rumble motor, the DC power connectors, and a length of cable. I use speaker cable, and this is about 18 inches long, and we're going to connect that up uh, for to power the motors. Uh, this doesn't really matter what way around you connect it, unless you're bothered about what whether your motors spin clockwise or counterclockwise. Um, here is one already made up. I've used heat shrink tubing, but you can use uh, insulating tape, uh, both ends done there. Okay, I'll get the other one done and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, now that's done. Now for the um, power supply to go into the DC power connector. So for this, I'm going to use a USB cable. Where's the snippers gone? Cut the end off. Find the um, the red and the black wires in there. And connect them up to your DC connector. Using the red wire connects to the center. Make sure you've got the polarity right there. Okay, so I'll come back when that's done. So we've got all our uh, power and motor wires all set up now. So what we need to do is uh, program the Arduino. So um, we're going to plug it into the computer. Um, there's my 5 volt power cable that's gone back to a USB connector. Just connecting the red and the black cables with the red to the center and the black to the uh, sleeve and put that in. Otherwise, it's not got enough power to uh, power the motors just from the USB connector. So, uh, right, let's plug in the Arduino and then we'll get it programmed. If you open up Device Manager on your computer, And then scroll down until you find ports, COM ports, and you'll see it listed there. So that's COM11 for this one. If you want to be sure, unplug it and plug it back in, and you'll see it disappear and come back again. So uh, COM11, let's just remember that. So we go to uh, SimHub, go to the Arduino section, and open the Arduino setup tool. Start from scratch. And the first thing we want to do is give it a name. So this is uh, the name it appears with in SimHub. If you've got multiple devices connected, it's handy to have a name so you don't get confused. And we scroll down and we find the uh, motor driver. So it's this here, the L298N motor board. Just enable that. And uh, the wiring diagram has all the default pins there. So you don't need to modify any of those, but just uh, make note of them. In, in case uh, anything's not working, you might have to go back to that and see if uh, SimHub decided to change them. Choose our COM port here, the one we just identified, and then uh, choose the Arduino Nano as the board. There's two versions on there, old bootloader and new bootloader, depending uh, where you got your board from. You'll have one of those, so if it doesn't work, try the other one. It won't damage the board, or it hasn't done for any of the ones I've done wrong. Then click Upload to Arduino. And it will uh, take a, a few seconds to compile it and then uh, program the board. There we go. So we'll close that. And now we'll just clear devices and we'll scan. See what it finds. There we go. So it's found motors number one and two on COM port 11. 
So that's our device. So now what we're going to do is going to plug in the uh, the motors and uh, check it all works. I'll just hold these here so you can see them spinning. Right, so uh, where we want to go to test it out is the Shake It Motors heading on the left. And it will be uh, channels one and two there, the accelerator and the brake. So um, what I'll do is I'll click test and that will spin that one there which is the, the big one, which is the break. So I'll rename channel one to break, just to make it clearer to understand what's going on. Oop. And we'll test the other one, there we go, then the small one spins. So we'll call that one accelerator, or gas, if you're American. Did I spell that right? Is it one L? Probably not, but it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, so the control section, you can assign a key to increase or decrease the gain of the motors. It's quite handy because if you have it too high, it'll um, make your foot go numb. Right, yeah, so see in the motors output, we need to assign which uh, rumble effects go to which motor. So for wheels locking, we shall turn that on for the brake motor. And we don't want it on for the accelerator because when you've got ABS kicking in, it wouldn't be through your accelerator pedal. So there you go. Now we test it and we can see the brake motor going. Things with the uh, brake motor need slightly higher um, volume on the right there because it's a heavier weight to get moving. We test out the RPMs. Uh, we need to enable that first in the motor's output. RPMs assigned to the accelerator. And then when we run a test, here we go. Got the RPM one spinning. So that's it, it's all uh, fully working. What we need to do next is to install the uh, the motor mounts. So to, to put it in the motor mount, this is a, the Thrustmaster one. Uh, you just need to pull apart the uh, the mount a bit to give it a bit of slack. Then you can push the motor in there, trying to keep the cable aligned with the groove just to keep things neat and out of the way. It won't fit in the groove, but it just sits nicer if it can be at the groove. Pop it in there till it's flush. Do that on the, both the motors and then they're ready to mount to the pedals. Right, so now I'm going to show you how to install it on uh, the pedals to mount the motors. So first I'll show you the Logitech set. You notice at the back of each pedal there is these three holes. Only one of them is in use to mount the pedal. So that leaves you with two free holes. So the mount has three holes in it, so you simply mount that over it. Uh, oh, not that way, the other way around. <laughs> uh, they're leaving you two holes, so on this one we're going to mount them on the outside two holes. So uh, you don't need to see me doing that. Uh, let's just come back to it when I've done that. That's done with a, uh, a standard M4 uh, screw. It doesn't need to be very long at all, just enough to go through. Right, so there we have it. The uh, motor mount has been mounted. You see the two screws just going in the back there. Make sure they're done up nice and tight so it doesn't rattle around. Um, obviously, there'd be a motor in there. I've just mounted this one for demonstration purposes. And then you could uh, you, you, you use a zip tie to tidy up the cabling. And you're good to go. Right now I'll show you how to mount the Thrustmaster motor mount. See I've already done the brake there, so let's just get on with the accelerator here. So you start by removing the uh, screws in the front of the uh, metal plate. And away comes the plastic bit behind that as well. And we simply slot the uh, motor mount on behind it, lining up all the holes. 
put the pedals back on. This is a T3PA set of pedals. Um, I believe it will work with other models. Just check with me. Again, do it up nice and tight. And then you can use a, uh, a zip tie to keep your cables tidy and uh, rooted as you wish. But that is it. That's, uh, that's installation on the pedals done. Uh, so all that's left to do now is, um, now we're happy with it, I've super glued in the Arduino mount and we need to put the lid on the case. So the, there's vent holes in the case, these need to go above the heat sink of the, uh, the, the motor driver just to help dissipate any heat. It's quite a tight fit uh, and in fact once it's on you might struggle to get it off. So let's just, uh, just do it one corner at a time. Mounting it. It's quite a strong click. There we go. So that's it all complete, ready to plug in and use. I uh, hope you enjoy it. Any questions, uh, just leave a comment or contact me through my shop. Uh, all the links are available in the video description. I uh, hope you enjoy them and uh, thank you very much.